generally speaking, what a fellow means when he says it was a fair fight. Turns out to be, I won the way I expected to. Uh, AVAC was in a position that they weren't supposed to win. They were going to have to use an unexpected method. Of course, that would be called unfair, wouldn't it? They're right over here, Captain Bratton. Just take a seat, and I'll be with you in a moment. Oh, thanks. Nothing special the immigration department wants to see me about, is there? I mean, if it's those new fungoid life forms you're worried no, about. No, no, Captain, it's not fungoid life forms. Uh, let's see, your ship just arrived here at Terra an hour ago. Yes, yes, we docked at McGuardia Field at 4 p.m. In fact, I haven't even had time Has to get... Has your crew left the ship yet? No, sir. After all, I am conscious of the great responsibility we inter-system cargo carriers have regarding the importation of non-terrestrial toxins and microbodies and unicellular Captain, life. Captain, I'm not a bacteriologist. My name's Jeffy. I'm a psychologist. I see, sir. Just what do you see? You're making a check to see if I'm spaceworthy, not neurotic or cracking up under the stress. And you jot down notes and just from little slips a man makes because he's tired and needs a rest and a shower and a couple of beers at a high-class bar and maybe a few days of quiet in the country, away from always worrying about a media breaking through the hall. I... Oh, I admit I am somewhat knocked out. Who wouldn't be? I brought this cargo in from Deneb. We've been out there between systems, the long haul, for 13 months. And we've got nothing to apologize for. You let me rest up. How about trying that, instead of badgering us with psychological questions? I'm sorry, Captain. Now, let's see. You visited the sixth planet to the Deneb system. A vac or something like that? A vac. Did you and your crew enjoy your stay there? I treated us okay. We were three weeks loading. During that time, we... Mostly just strolled around, taking things easy. Wasn't much to see. Mostly just small towns, factories. They make uh, ceramic household goods. That was our cargo, in fact. That's a darn small planet they've got there, sir, and overcrowded. Every half mile, there's a factory going like crazy, and the air's so full of smoke from the stacks you can hardly breathe. Sir, they've got almost no raw materials. But out of what they have, plus the synthetics they've developed, they're able to turn out so much pottery that you'll find it everywhere in the galaxy. It's amazing. Every system you visit, you see vases, salt shakers, flower pots. They're all marked made at AVAC. Just think what they could do if they had a sufficient supply of raw materials. Makes you wonder. Yes, it does make you wonder. They, uh, they fought a little war back about ten years with the other planets of their system. Beat them, too. But it didn't do them any good. The other planets were just as depleted. <clears throat> Captain, I want you to examine something. Oh, yes, sir. That's in a vacuum space mine. Seeks out the target by beaming in on the target's heat. They used that in a couple of three wars. Awful thing. Look at that boring snout. Mm -hmm. I'm told it cuts its way through the hull of a ship to the wall of a building until it actually gets to a living creature. Then... Yes, sir. It's a vicious weapon. The troops call them leeches. But that was ten years ago, sir. Now they're a commercial planet. They threw out the military leaders and voted in a business administration. They're all for trade and culture exchange now. They learned their lesson. Did they? Captain, while you were on AVAC, did you buy and bring back here with you any toys for your children? Just as a fair fight hasn't been well-defined, neither is the concept toy. Uh, Take a portable typewriter, for instance. Is this a toy for a child? Or is it the working tool of a newspaper reporter? It isn't really what the thing is, but how you think about it, what you intend to do with it. What is a toy? A toy for children. While you were on AVAC, did you buy and bring back here with you any toys for your children? Well, as a matter of fact... I'd like to see what toys you bought on Avac. Let's have a look. Well, they're back on the ship in my cabin. Captain, I'd like you to glance at this particular toy. It showed up a month or so ago. Possibly you saw something like it in the store on Avac. It looks like an ordinary set of model soldiers to me. Uh, British grenadiers, I guess. Very authentic, too. Gosh... Look at the detail on the uniforms. Yes, it's amazing. You'd think they were real. Genuine British soldiers of centuries ago, standing three inches high. And their cannons. You'd almost expect those cannons to fire, wouldn't you? Fine workmanship. 
Well, Captain, the cannons do fire. No kidding. I'll show you. I'm using now what is called a ramrod. Uh-huh. Ramming the powder and shot in. Just a second. There. Now it's ready. They must use watchmaker's tools, microscopic precision. I'll fire it out the window. Ready? Ready. Oh, yes, guards. Will you begin clearing the debris? I'm sorry. I meant it to explode entirely outside the building. Must have caught a corner of the window. This is terrible. Now, to the soldiers. They're dead, of course. Dead? Well, let's say inert. We destroyed their neural systems with high voltage. What? We simply took the cartons of soldiers and put a charge through them. They're fragile. It's hard even for a people uniquely talented in microscopic assembly to produce a workable robot only three inches high. I see. Of course, robots. Here, look at this. Why, well, I'd, I'd say this is, uh... But it looks like a little toy telephone set. Gosh, we had those when I was a kid. Talk to the kid across the street. Transmit for a block or more. Talk into it. Here. I'll get out the mate and answer you. In fact, I'll go stand over here. Away from you with it. Okay, Captain. Can you hear me? I hear you, sir. Say something foul. Sir? You're a spaceman. Think of the foulest oath you can remember. Say it into the phone. Okay, sir. You know, sir, it's the darndest thing. I guess I must be nervous. I can't. Try. I can't, sir. I can't think of anything foul. All right. That's what I wanted to show you, Captain. The phone acts to inhibit the speech center of persons near it. Sort of damper. Actually, the technique was known to us. We used it during World War III, during brain cleansing therapy. Uh-huh. You know, obliterating hostilities from the minds of enemy prisoners. Sure. But to incorporate it into a child's toy. You see, Captain, a child exposed to this mechanism over a long period of time would develop a docility, a passivity, an inability to feel angry or aggressive. In other words... Brain cleansed. Now look at this. What uh, seems to be... Yes, it's one of those question and answer games. You might, you get a buzz if you guess the right answer. I'll fit a question sheet over the terminals. With this toy, the child develops a rudimentary knowledge of natural facts and a variety of topics. And let's see. This top sheet consists of questions on growing plants and flowers. Yeah, well, let's try something different. All right, how about great composers? No, I, I think I'd like to try this sheet titled The Human Body. I used to know something about that. I took a college correspondence course in biology during a long trip out. Very well. I'll plug in question three. The digestive system breaks down protein foods into what simple molecule? Uh, amino acids. Answer number nine. Plug the answer wire onto the number nine terminal. I agree. Amino acids is right. Well, oh, what's the matter then? Works normally. Now try it the way we started. Question three with answer nine. You won't get a buzz this time. Well, but we did get a buzz, and it's right. Yes, we got a buzz before, but we won't get one now. See, Captain, there's a circuit in this thing that randomizes the buzz. The child using this so-called educational toy will get correct answers to start with. Then the randomization sets in, and before he is sure enough of his own knowledge to contradict it, his meager fund of accurate facts will be gradually distorted. Not wiped out, but altered more and more. Until he is confused. Well, but uh, why? So he'll be convinced that there is no such thing as a correct answer. And now I'd like to see the toys you brought back with you. Let's go to your ship and have a look at them. <laughs> won the last war always wants his methods of fighting a war to be the ultimate weapons, because he wins with those. But what is the real ultimate weapon? A weapon that no other weapon can touch. How about the weapon of changing your enemy into a friend, or changing your enemy so he doesn't even try to defeat you? Wouldn't that be a more powerful weapon than any possible attacking device? This, uh, this is my younger kid, Charles. He's nine. Mm-hmm. 
What is it? Well, can't you tell? It looks like a costume. Hey, I'll spread it out. What kind of a costume is it? I don't see any identifying features. It looks more like a sack. A gray sack. I shopped around AVAC for days before I ran across this. Yeah, I'll put it on. Right sleeve. And left. There. Hmm. Explain it, Captain. But can't you see? No, you're simply inside a gray sack. That's all I can see. I'm a cowboy. What? This is a cowboy suit. More than that. Of course, it takes a few minutes. Good Lord. It's changing color. So am I. Changing me into a cowboy. Darn it, I said I was a cowboy and I am. Now, I don't mean I'm just pretending to be a cowboy. I mean, as long as I'm wearing this material around me, I actually become a cowboy. <laughs> Notice I've got chaps on my legs. I put this on a couple of times on the trip back, me and the crew both. Really got a kick out of it. Looky here. I got me a six gun. Where did that gun come from? Grew out of the suit. And your head's expanding. And turning black. Nah. That's my ten-gallon black felt hat. Incredible. Put him up, partner. Why, your skin looks like leather. Is that your idea of a humorous remark, partner? Take it off. Take what off? That material before it's too late. Take it off before you're so far down in that fantasy world you can't get back. Like they intended it. Take it off. Uh, just when I was beginning to enjoy myself. You know, friend, when I was just a little tyke, I used to pine to be back in the good old days and ride the reins. Back when you could smell the sagebrush growing out in the free country where... What was I saying? Why, a cowboy. Why, I, I always wanted to be a cowboy. Would it be the same for me, I wonder? Oh, no, I put it, it on? It's, it's whatever your fantasy is. Uh, Charles probably will use it to become a 20th century businessman. Gray flannel suit, Ivy League. He reads all those old adventures about New York before it was destroyed. Those uh, advertising operas. Give me that material. I'm impounding it. But why? What, what's wrong? It just helps a kid act out perfectly normal childhood fantasies. Char Charles plays advertising exec all day long. With this, he can... A rip. child couldn't possibly hold out against this. It almost got you, and you're a grown man. Do you want to lose your child? Is that what you want? Do you want to see him disappear down into a fantasy world and never return? Let's see what else you brought back. Yeah, yeah. Only uh, one more toy. Actually, it's a game for my older boy, Pete. He's 12. Open it up. Yeah. It's called the uh, Enterprise. I figure all the kids in the block can play. It's a lot of fun. A bunch of us played it on the trip back. Hmm. Can two play? Mm-hmm. Two players up to eight. Very well, let's play. Each player buys shares with money borrowed from the other players. Now, at any time, a creditor can demand payment either in shares or in money. But as soon as a player ceases to extend credit... He must show what shares he holds. He has to show which groups he's been able to get control of. From then on, he has to bid out in the open, with everyone else knowing what he's got shares. I bid 3,000 solo units for two shares of Neptune Nonferic Ores, Incorporated. Hmm. Make it 4,000 and the shares are yours. Four thousand. Sold. Okay. Now, you owe me 600,000 solar units. And I owe you 355,000 solar units. I demand payment of the difference. Hmm. Let's see. I don't have 245,000 units worth of stock. Yes, you do. If you turn in your Martian Diamond Mines Limited. Oh, but that's my best bluff. That corners you from the inner planets. Put it in or call the game over. All right, it's in. Game's over. But why? I have enough solar units left to buy all your remaining stock. So in terms of profit and loss, you're wiped out. Yes, I guess you're right. Very well, you wind up with three expensive groups. And I... I don't have any. Well, do you see anything harmful in this game? All I can see myself is that it teaches a child the basic facts of economic life. And that's something every child should know. Oh, I have to admit, I find nothing subversive in this game. In fact, it's nothing but a variant of an old Terran parlor game called Monopoly. Yes, you can retain this toy, Captain. It meets with immigration specifications. Well, that's a relief. Sorry to have caused you so much trouble. 
I'll go and interview your crew and see what children's artifacts they brought back. You can go to your hotel now. Uh, can you find your way around the ship? Oh, yes, yes, I'm used to it. I'll see you again, and next time you dock. All right. Hope your children enjoy playing Enterprise. Matter of fact, I enjoyed it myself. Might have you bring in a set for me next time. Sure. Anything to accommodate the immigration department. Well, I better get all the pieces back in the box before they get lost. Heck, in that game, Monopoly, the player who wound up with the most money and property won the game. And in Enterprise, the winner is the one who's wiped out. Hey, I'll bet he didn't realize he beat me. But he didn't have a solar unit or a share of stock left. He won by a clean sweep. Mm-hmm. 